So now we are going to talk about acceleration. Acceleration is basically the rate of change of velocity. So average acceleration is defined in terms of the of velocity as delta v over delta t, which is by definition. So whenever you see these kinds of arrows with a uh, triple sign, that basically means is by definition. So by definition, average acceleration is defined as v final minus v initial divided by delta t. Instantaneous acceleration is an acceleration at any instant, and this is given by delta v over delta t in the limit when delta t becomes very, very small. Average acceleration does not tell us about the variation of v in the interval delta t. The direction of a average is the same as that of the, uh, of the velocity vectors that it belongs to. So note, since Velocity is a vector, acceleration is also a vector. Some important facts. Since velocity is a vector, the change in its direction gives an acceleration, even if its magnitude is unchanged. For example, the components of V can change in such a way that the magnitude of V remains constant. Can you think of any examples? Well, here's an example. Magnitude of the velocity may not be changing, but its direction is constantly changing when things move in a circle. When things move in a circle, they are being accelerated. And we will talk about that when we talk about centripetal accelerations and so on and so forth. So continuing from the example from the last problem, now we are required to find the magnitude of the acceleration at t equals 7 seconds. Now how do we do that? We know that the average acceleration is the change in velocity per unit time. So in this case it will make sense since the velocity is, cha is, is pretty constantly changing or decreasing. What we can do is find the slope of the graph and that will give us the, um, uh, the acceleration at t equals, seven gra t equals 7 seconds. So A average equals delta v over delta t which means velocity at 12 seconds is 0 and velocity at 4 seconds is 20. So take the difference and your answer comes out to be 2.5 meters per second. Note that we are taking the magnitude here. If we were not taking the magnitude here, my answer will come out with a minus 2.5, which basically will mean is that it is now a decreasing acceleration or in some pe people want to call it deceleration. Another very important phenomenon in physics is motion along a line with constant acceleration. For constant acceleration, we can define delta x, which is our displacement, to be equals to the average velocity times delta t. And average velocity is defined as v initial plus v final divided by 2. These are the sort of things that you need to be able to remember throughout the course of this, throughout this semester and throughout this course because they will come back over and over and over again. Another thing that are called kinematic equations or equations of motion are given here. The first equation of motion relates velocities with, ex with acceleration and time. Vx equals V initial plus A which is the acceleration times delta t. Second equation of motion is the displacement equation. So displacement equals uh, initial velocity ti times time, change in time equal plus one half a delta t squared. The third equation of motion relates the displacement with the velocity and acceleration. Now the main job for you to learn now is which equation to use when you have certain problems or when you are faced with certain uh, types of questions, which equation is the one that you need to be able to use. Now here's a good simple problem. And the problem says, starting from rest, a brick slides along a straight line down an icy roof with constant acceleration whose magnitude is 4.9 meters per second. How fast is the brick moving when it reaches the roof after 0 0.09 seconds? This is a really good example. Now, let's define what we, what we mean by when we are talking about a brick starting from rest. Now, in this problem, it says that we have a roof 
and we have a block that's on the roof and it is sliding down from the roof until the edge right and it says that it is slide it's starting from rest so that means in my given I know V naught, which is the initial velocity, is zero meters per second. And then it gives me that it is sliding down the roof with a constant acceleration of 4.9 meters per second. And it gives me that it takes the brick to slide down. Delta T is 0 0.09 seconds. And it's asking me to find what the final velocity will be right at the edge of the roof, right? So let's say this is my roof and it's sliding down. Now in all sorts of problems, what you guys should be starting from is defining what your coordinate system is. So in general, most people will use a coordinate system that is x and y. But in this case, my suggestion would be that we use a coordinate system x and y, which will make our life easier because now we don't have to worry about anything else, okay? So let's look at this problem and solve for it. So go back to the slide that had the equations of motion in it and try to come up with a, an equation of motion that you can use that will help you solve the problem. Okay, these are your kinematic equations. So what equation do you think that will fit that helps us solve this problem? I hope everybody said the first equation. So in this case, we will have Vf equals V naught plus At. What do we know? V naught is zero. I have A, which is 4.9 meters per second squared. And I have delta t, which is 0 0.09 seconds. Note I am keeping my uh, units alongside it, which will help me towards the end. And I can just look at it and cancel these two out, do a little bit of a calculation, and come up with an answer um, for my uh, delta y, which comes out to be blank meters per second. And I want you guys to do the math and plug that number in. Now this, this problem or any other problem that you will do from here on out should be divided into two parts. One part is the given, what is the actual question giving me? And then comes the solution. Can I find an equation that I can use in order to solve for my answer? Okay, so if you follow this recipe of writing down, draw a picture, write down everything that the question gives you, and then look for answers. It will make your life so much more simple.